In this section of the MTEL math videos on the open response questions for the general curriculum math subtest, we're going to be looking at ways in which a teacher could organize their writing. Every teacher is different. Some teachers are really good at organizing it. They don't need something like this. But not me. I actually think most teachers, you know, would benefit from this. Um, and so this is just going to be a graphic organizer. Here's what, what I've done. I've made three columns. Basically, it's a comp uh, these three things I'm going to want to make sure I include every time I make a statement. So if I make a statement that the student did something correct, like, for example, a student, you know, you know, used, you know, correct, you know, uh, area formulas, area formulas for, you know, uh, let's say a triangle, one half base you know, for triangle, I would, in quotations, you know, note what they did, one half, you know, six times four. I would also, you know, want to, in my explanation, I'd want to point out that they were able to find out the base of that triangle, that they used the correct formula. Um, I'd want to explain, you know, that you use one half base times height to find the area of a triangle. You know, all these things, blah, blah, blah. You know, it doesn't have to be that explanation, you know. Um, I might not want to write the explanation there, but in the back of your mind, you should be thinking about not only making a statement and providing a specific example, but in the back of your mind, you should be thinking about how you would explain that, you know, and the major things major points that you want to point out, you know, why did you specifically pick that example to talk about. So this graphical organizer just helps me streamline some of these ideas. Now, this is the good thing. This is, and I would have a couple of really good things that the student did that I noticed and observed. Now I would come to analyzing a mistake. For example, the student uh, use the wrong formula for the area of a circle. So I want to say, you know, something like wrong formula for, you know, um, area of circle. And this is where, you know, I want again, use a specific uh, detail from it. Well, they did one half two pi r and I think I'd want to point out that while they understood they were going to only be working with half a circle, so that would be correct. They messed up the formula. And this would go under my explanation. And I would want to not only uh, give the correct formula, pi r squared, but then I'd have to show how you would find the area, which means I'd have to be like, pi times the radius squared, so that would be pi times, you know, 3 squared. And I'd have to go about solving the area of that, um, pardon me, that, that circle. Then I'd want to include that, you know, the correct area for the semicircle should have been, you know, whatever it was, 14.13. I want to include that in my work. So this graphic organizer is just here to uh, note down some of the things that they did correctly with specific relevant examples and some of the things they did wrong with specific or relevant examples. And, you know, you want to make sure that you show your work somewhere so that uh, you can actually uh, present that to the graders so that they know that you know how to apply this stuff. Here's another uh, graphic organizer because my handwriting is terrible. <laughs> but um, here's another way of thinking about it. I like to add a summary, an intro. Some teachers don't do that. I think it's always good to summarize what you're going to be doing. So I might be like, in this essay, I'm going to correct errors and misconceptions in the student's work. I might do that. But, you know, you could, you could also just start off right off at this step two, which is start correcting the things, identifying the things that the student did correct. And there's a whole slew of them. You know, they did... Uh, they used the right formula for the area of a rectangle. So that's one thing. 
they did the right formula for the area of a triangle. That's an, that's a that's another thing. You could talk about how they found the you know the base of the rectangle using the radius of uh, of the circle. You could talk about how they found out the height of the triangle by subtracting the three and the th um, by adding up the the measurements that were given and finding out that missing height. Definitely include uh, all the positive things. Now we go to um, identifying mi mistakes and misconceptions. Oops. <laughs> misconceptions. <laughs> Anyways, this is the time where you, you know, you would talk about um, some of the mistakes they did, like using the wrong formula, where they should have used pi r squared, or talk about that decimal multiplication mistake, you know, involving 3.14 times 3. Or you could talk about a ratio mistake, where they came up with a partial relationship of 3 fourths, where 3 fourths, while getting to the 3 fourths they did correctly, the 3 fourths itself doesn't really make sense given the shape that you're presented with. These are all things in which I would want to provide specific examples that reinforce what I'm stating. And I'd want to, um, for each one of these, show and explain how I get to the correct answer. Now there's, there's this section here which says provide that alternative solution. This is where you provide that creative, that creative way of approaching this problem that helps enhance the student's understanding of the work, of the problem itself and the core problems. You have to show your work. You have to be able to explain the example. And I would also add explain why it's going to help how, how and why it's going to help the student understand that math concept. And then you might want to include, uh, finally you want to include an answer sentence that reinforces uh, how this method gets you back to um, the, you know, the question that the student had to do. So I might, if I was, if I was doing the method that we did before on thinking about this in terms of part to whole, I might close it off with saying, you know, approximately one third of the entire shape enclosed by the semicircle is, um, approximately one third of the entire shape enclosed by the whole is the semicircle. I, I would, I would want to um, close it off by, no matter how creative my idea is, I want to make sure that I give that answer sentence which has that answer in it and circle it so the grader knows that my method does work that it helps, it will help us all get to the correct answer. And then I think finally you want to have some sort of summary. In the summary you want to touch upon the major themes, the major things that the student did correct, and the major things that the student did wrong, and maybe, you know, just restate, you know, your alternative solution uh, so that um, we could go back to, so that, you know, you're just restating your alternative way to solve it. Okay. Our last video is going to be looking at samples, samples that have been that have received a four so that we can get an idea of how this all fits.